We are continuing our lessons on corresponding angles, alternate angles, and co-interior angles. But before we continue the lesson today, let's look at the last exercise we have. Question 1. Is line PQ parallel to line RS? The answer is yes. And the reason is the angles, the two angles measure 85 degrees and they are alternate and equal. Therefore, the lines that have formed them are parallel lines. Question two. Find the value of angle X. Angle X and the angle given, which are 65 degrees, are co-interior angles. So angle X is equal to 180 degrees minus 65 degrees, which gives us 115 degrees. Question three, what is the value of angle X? In that figure, angle X is alternate to angle 72 degrees. So angle X is equal to 72 degrees. Question four, find the value of angle X and angle Y. In question four, angle X is equal to 78 degrees because they are alternate angles. And angle Y is equal to 102 degrees because it's co-interior with angle X, which is 78 degrees. Well done. I am certain you got all of them correct. Still looking at corresponding alternate and co-interior angles. Given that line AB is parallel to line CD, here we have line AB and line CD. And we've been given that these two lines are parallel. Angle EGB is 55 degrees. That's the angle over there, EGB. G is a point of intersection between line AB and line EF. And that angle is 55 degrees. The question is, Find the value of all the other angles. All the other angles are angle R, angle P, Q, T, and U. We're going to use what we know already to try to find the value of those angles. So solution, if we know that this angle is 55 degrees, we can easily find the value of angle R. R is equal to 55. And what's the reason? They are vertically opposite angles. So R is equal to 55 degrees. Reason? Vertically opposite angles. Good. The next one, if we know that R it's 55 degrees. Let's use that information to find the value of P. What can we see? We can see a Z formation that tells us that angle R and angle P are alternate. They are both on the alternate side of the transversal and they are embedded inside there. So, R is equal to P is equal to 55 degrees. And they are equal because the lines that have formed them are parallel lines. And we know that parallel lines form equal alternate angles when cut across by a transversal. So P is equal to R is equal to 55, and the reason is alternate angles on parallel lines. Brilliant. Next, having found the value of P, then we can also find T. The same reason. T is vertically opposite 
to angle P. So, P is equal to T, and P is 55, so T is also 55. And that's equal to 55 degrees. And they are vertically, the reason is vertically opposite angles. Next, let's find the value of angle Q. We notice that P and Q are angles on a straight line. So P plus Q should give us 180 degrees. P plus Q, angle P plus angle Q is equal to 180 degrees. And the reason? Sum of angles on a straight line. Sum of angles on a straight line. And then finally, the value of Q, let's put it here, angle Q will be equal to 180 degrees, take away 55 degrees. 10 take away 5, is 5, and then we have a 7, 7 take away 5 is a 2, and then a 1. So angle Q is actually equal to 125 degrees. And having found Q, we know U. Q and U are vertically opposite angles, so U is equal to Q is equal to 125 degrees. Angle U is equal to Angle Q, and that's equal to 125 degrees. The reason is vertically opposite angles. You see how easy it is to find the angles that are formed by parallel lines and transversals. Let's look at a second example. Example two, find the value of angles A and B. The figure is here. Let's study this diagram. We have an angle that measures 39 degrees. Another angle here is 51 degrees. We have a right angle, then angle A and B. And we're finding the values of angle A and B. We've also been given that these two lines are parallel. So. How do we find the values of angle A and B? If these lines are parallel, then we can see that this is a transversal. The first thing to do is try to extend the lines so you can see the relationship. All right, I extend this line a bit. And then I extend the transversal on this side. Does that give me any clue? If not, let's extend this and see if that would help. Not exactly. Good. We can extend this because this is also another transversal. It cuts across the two parallel lines. So, we also extend it this way. And then, what do we see? Angle A and the angle that measures 51 degrees gives us a Z formation. Can you see that? There's a Z formation here. They are both on the alternate sides of the transversal. This is the transversal we are using to be able to find the value of angle A. So angle A and 51 are alternate angles. And they've been formed by parallel lines. So they are equal. So solution A is equal to 
51 degrees. The reason is alternate angles on parallel lines. Good. If we know that A is equal to 51 degrees, what is the value of angle B? We can see that 90 degrees and A and B will give us a straight line. So adding the three angles together should give us 180 degrees. That's the sum of the angles on a straight line. So 90 degrees plus angle A plus angle B is equal to 180 degrees. The reason sum of angles on a straight line. That immediately follows. We know that A is 51 degrees. So B is equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of 90 degrees and A. 51 plus 90 is 141. Because 5 and 9 will give you 14. So that's 141 degrees. So B is equal to 180 degrees minus 141 degrees. And that gives us 10 take away 1 is a 9. We have a 7 left there. 7 take away 4 is a 3. So angle B is equal to 39 degrees. See how easy it is to solve. Let's solve one more example. Example 3. We have a circle and we have two parallel lines drawn in it. And also we have two transversals, two lines cutting across the parallel lines. We want to find the value of x and y. Look at the shape properly. What can you notice? I can immediately see a z form showing that angle 48 degrees is alternate to angle y. Because these are the parallel lines and this is a transversal. And they are alternate. They are on the alternate sides of the transversal. Also, x is alternate to 54. Alternate angles give you a z formation, which is very visible here. So x is equal to 54 degrees. The reason is alternate angles on parallel lines. And we have that y is equal to 48 degrees. The reason is also alternate angles on parallel lines. So anytime you have to find out the value of angles to calculate, look out for the relationship between the angles and the lines. Having done all of this, I'll give you something to try out. Take your time to try out these exercises. Find the value of the marked angles. Question one, we have angle Y there and angle X. Find the values. Question two, we have X and Y. And these are parallel lines. Find the value of X and Y. And for question three, Take a look at it, find the value of angle X, angle Y, and angle Z. My name is Ngozi Oreva Odene. Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to give us a thumbs up. 
follow me on brilliantmaths.com. You'll find lots and lots of practice. It will help you excel in maths in school. And always remember, maths is easy and you can do it.